SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, the world's most powerful commercial rocket, has captivated the world with its immense power and ability to carry heavy payloads into space since its debut. Sadly, the number of Falcon Heavy flights has only reached nine times so far, too modest compared to its brother Falcon 9 with nearly 300 launches. This is what makes space enthusiasts regret the most. However, everything will be changed, soon as Elon Musk has an insane plan to increase Falcon Heavy's yearly liftoff rate by dozens of times over the next few years. So what is SpaceX's plan actually like? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Back on April 24, the United States Space Force revealed interesting news that Elon Musk's SpaceX had been approved to lease a second rocket launch complex at a military base in California, helping the space company prepare for its fifth launch site in the United States. Under the lease, SpaceX will launch its workhorse Falcon rocket from Space Launch Complex 6 or Slick 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base, a military launch site north of Los Angeles where the space company operates another launch pad, SLC-4. Besides that, it has two others in Florida and its private Starbase site in South Texas. All Falcon Heavy launches have been conducted from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. SpaceX also has a launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and one for Starship flights at Starbase in South Texas. Considered one of the most iconic launch sites in the world, but SLC-6's history was filled with cancellations. SLC-6 was originally developed during the 1960s to support the Titan III launches of the United States Air Force's Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MOL. Two military astronauts would have spent 30 days in space conducting reconnaissance operations. The United States government canceled MOL in June 1969 without any crewed flights, cost overruns, schedule delays, and improvements in uncrewed reconnaissance satellites rendered the program redundant. SLC-6 was repurposed during the 1980s to support military polar orbit launches of NASA's space shuttle. The United States Air Force scrapped those plans in 1989 following the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger and her seven-member crew in 1986. A decision was made to revert to launching military payloads on expendable rockets. However, that doesn't mean there are no achievements here. Lockheed Martin conducted four launches of its Athena-1 and Athena-2 rockets for SLC-6 during the 1990s. The boosters compiled a record of two successes and two failures. ULA has conducted 10 Delta IV launches from SLC-6 since June 2006. All flights were successful. ULA is now retiring the Delta IV rocket in favor of its new Vulcan Centaur booster. There are two additional Delta IV launches carrying National Reconnaissance Office satellites scheduled for this year in 2024. After its final Delta IV heavy launch in September 2022, ULA vacated the site. This gives SpaceX more room to handle an increasingly busy launch schedule for commercial, government, and internal satellite launches with the firm's yearly liftoff rate could reach 100 in a couple of years. As Nate Jansen, manager of Launchpad Systems and Operations for SpaceX at Vandenberg and a 10-year employee of the firm said, we're really ramping up Vandenberg to rates that we've never seen before and the area hasn't seen before. From one launch four years ago to three the next year and 12 the following year, SpaceX expects about 30 liftoffs by the end of this year. For 2024, the rate could jump to 50, then rocket to 100 in 2025. Next year, we'll be launching about once a week, but the plan in about two years is about every three to four days, Jansen said. Work to ready the site should begin soon, with a goal of the first Falcon launch from SLC-6 taking place in mid-2025 and the first Falcon Heavy contract for Vandenberg in 2026, Jansen added. This good start will pave the way for the company's more ambitious plans, one of which is to win defense contracts that their competitors also desire. Vandenberg Space Force Base allows for launches in a southern trajectory over the Pacific Ocean, 
often used for weather monitoring military or spy satellites that commonly rely on polar Earth orbits. SpaceX's grant of Space Launch Complex 6 comes as rocket companies prepare to compete for the Pentagon's Phase 3 National Security Space Launch or NSSL Phase 3 program. NSSL Phase 3 is a multi-billion dollar procurement of launch services projected for 2025 through 2034. United Launch Alliance and SpaceX won NSSL Phase 2 in 2020, and their current contracts are being recompeted. Proposals are due December 15, and contract awards are projected in mid to late 2024. There are two solicitations for NSSL Phase 3 because the Space Force is splitting the program into two lanes. The Lane 1 portion of NSSL Phase 3 includes lower-risk missions to lower orbits, open to any launch provider with a proven flight record. As many as 30 missions will be awarded annually over 10 years, extending from fiscal year 2025 through 2034. The Lane 2 solicitation is open to heavy lift launch providers certified by the United States Space Force and can fly payloads to nine reference orbits, including some of the most demanding missions. Plans to select a third provider in Lane 2 would open the door to a new entrant like Blue Origin owned by Jeff Bezos, which is developing its new Glenn rocket. Coincidentally, in November, it was reported that Jeff's company was in the process of purchasing United Launch Alliance from its parent company. Blue Origin purchasing ULA would instantly give the company an orbital rocket, as Vulcan is ready to fly and will most likely succeed on its first flight. It's like if you can't make a good enough rocket yourself, but you are rich, then the best way is to use the money to buy a new rocket from someone else. In a way, this is beneficial as it will give BO access to multi-billion dollar defense contracts that will start bringing in some significant revenue for the company. Especially both BO and ULA are already so closely connected with their BE4 contract. Bezos is also connected through Amazon as both Vulcan and the Atlas V have contracts to launch Kuiper satellites for the online retailer. However, the Space Force may decide only to award two contracts if the government determines there are less than three awardable offerers, said the final RFP. Lane 2 providers must demonstrate a capability to perform at least eight national security missions annually. The decision to award less than three contracts will be made at contract award next year, said the Space Systems Command. To win a Lane 2 contract, the command said, an offerer must have a credible plan to obtain certification by 1 October 2026, among other things. If a launch provider is awarded a Lane 2 contract but does not complete their certification, including certification flights and non-recurring design validation work, by 1 October of each order year, then the government will not assign any missions to that launch provider for that order year. All three Lane 2 winners will be eligible for up to $100 million a year in funding to pay for military unique requirements, such as having both East and West Coast launch sites, vertical integration facilities, and giving the Space Force access to their commercial launch data. Discussing the final result of the contract, some predict that the magic sauce here is the guarantee that ULA and BO will not be the two winners to the exclusion of SpaceX purely because ULA and BO use the same engines. For that reason, SpaceX is estimated at the 60% mark, the most diversified operating fleet of launchers and the superior capability and cadence. Either ULA or BO. If BO is chosen, ULA will go out of business. This is unlikely though, given BO's infantile approach to commitments thus far. ULA will be chosen and BO will benefit laterally along with Northrop as a subcontractor for propulsion elements. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.